Shalom. Welcome back to Iskar Forum, a prophetic think tank. Glad to have you with us. Let's begin with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the fact that you are the faithful God. You keep your word even to a thousand generations. And you promised that you would restore Israel in the end. Uh, after all the events of history, your promise still stands. Hallelujah. Thank you. And your promise for the Messiah coming out of the loins of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has been fulfilled in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. We bless you, Lord God, and thank you for this time together in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua ben Yehovah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm with, uh, my name's Les Lawrence. I'm with Elisha Vision Ministries, and I'd like to start with this picture of the, the uh, wall in Jerusalem uh, and the scripture from Isaiah 62 I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Jehovah, do not keep silent and give him no rest till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. That is a, a responsibility of watchmen, that we are watchmen on the wall. Hallelujah. All right. Well, I did a blog post this week on my Elisha Vision site. It's ElishaVision.com, that's how you get there. And anytime you push home, you can scroll down uh, through many uh, previous blog posts. This time I was writing about pay to slay still in force. The concept of pay to slay has been around for years, and the Palestinian Authority actually pays salaries to terrorists in Israeli prisons. And if they have a terrorist who is what they call a martyr, who kills Jews as he blows himself up, they actually pay salaries to his family. And that's still going on. This story is actually about uh, the Sabaro pizza bombing, which was 20 years ago. And so far, they've paid nearly one and a half million dollars to those murderers. Uh, and this story tells a lot of other ones or some other links to other articles. And I made the connection uh, it's really like Judas uh, betraying uh, the Jews, uh, or actually betraying Jesus uh, for 30 pieces of silver. It's the same <laughs> principle, same evil spirit still at work today. And uh, so in spite of that, God is in control and we put our trust in him. And uh, But I encourage you to read that article about pay to slay. It's still in force, still doing it. So now the, this interim governor, government in Israel before the election, November 1st, is going to have a big security challenge on September 1st, just two months before the election. Israel has uh, started, uh, brought a, a, a drilling rig for gas in the Mediterranean to a new area, which is in Israeli territory, but Hezbollah, who's a terrorist group in Lebanon, claims that it's Lebanese territory. They have no basis for that. It's not an international uh, determination. It's, it's definitely in, in Israel's uh, area. So that's a false claim. But nevertheless, uh, Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah, is planning, uh, threatening to uh, bomb that gas rig if Israel uh, actually starts pumping, which they're scheduled to do September 1st, just a couple weeks from now. So we'll need to watch that and pray about that. Be a watchman on the wall and pray. Um, in the polit political end of things, uh, this is an interesting poll. Uh, first of all, I'll just say that uh, so far the polls are still showing Netanyahu's party and his coalition, led by Likud, uh, to have uh, from 61 to 63 seats, which would be enough to form a stable government. So we're praying that that will happen to be a conservative, stable government. But in the meantime, this is a little interesting, uh, kind of encouraging in the same direction. A new poll says that right-wing voters are more confident with their vote. The survey shows that 75% of right-wing voters will vote the same as in the past, while only 45% of left-wing voters will do so. What that suggests is that more left-wing voters are, are going to be switching over and voting for uh, conservative uh, candidates. And uh, that bodes well for the election. I'm not sure we can say that there's going to be a wave election for conservatives in Israel, but uh, I'm praying that it'll be 
clear enough and strong enough that they'll be able to form a stable government. That's, that's what I'm praying for. Uh, the left-wing government had communists in the coalition. It had Muslim Brotherhood, Muslims in the coalition. It was definitely not good. So I'm praying for a conservative government, more biblically based. And the policies are inclined more towards biblical principles. Um, here's another little update about the uh, charges that uh, have been against Netanyahu for years now. They've never come to trial yet. Now it's supposed to be a trial. And so Israel pleads innocent and asks for the charges to be dropped. And uh, I'm praying that that'll be the case. Whether he should be prime minister or not, let the people decide. But these, these uh, what I consider to be uh, just insignificant charges, just similar to they're doing to uh, President Trump here in the United States, uh, trumping up charges. <laughs> Same parallels all, seems to be there all the time. Now, here's an interesting story from the Jerusalem Post. It was a, an exclusive by them that uh, Trump had sent a letter uh, authorizing Israeli sovereignty in the West Bank. There's been some debate lately. In fact, there was a book by his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, who, who said that uh, Trump never did actually authorize sovereignty, uh, although that was in the news at the time. And uh, so this letter actually refutes what's in Kushner's book. I'm not sure why there's a difference between the the uh, ex-president and his, and his son-in-law, but uh, nevertheless... Trump gave Netanyahu the green light to annex as long as he accepted a future Palestinian state in contrast with a description in Kushner's book. And uh, so um, that is encouraging, encouraging to me, and I think uh, we need to continue holding on to that. A lot of people don't like the idea that Netanyahu uh, was agree, in order to do that would agree to a Palestinian state, but no one says where the borders are, and if the Palestinian state was was Jordan taking responsibility. That would be that would be a, a pretty good outcome. So, and besides that, God, the land God gave the land to Israel, and it's not going to there's not going to be another Palestinian state there. Biblically, um, now here's some more good news. U.S. Jews moved to the West Bank settlements at a record rate in 2021. Uh, that's an, another encouraging thing on two fronts that it's U.S. Jews making Aliyah, moving to Israel, and that they're willing to live in the West Bank. And, of course, the West Bank is the world's <laughs> definition of that. It's actually biblically called Judea and Samaria. And uh, so that's an encouraging uh, movement there. I pray that that will continue and grow. And we talked last week about the Hashemite Kingdom of Palestine, the idea of, of having uh, the Palestinians be part of Jordan rather than starting a, having a second state. And uh, this article is suggesting that that would be a real winner for Lapid, Gantz, or Bibi, uh, but the left side is not using that at all. It remains to be seen if Bibi will do it, but uh, here's the uh, cartoon about it from Dry Bones. Israel elections in October, or in actually it's in November, uh, and the revolutionary Saudi plan is still being ignored by Bibi, Gantz, and Lapid. Uh, so there's a King Abdullah in Jordan all alone by the telephone for the, next to his hotline from Israel. Uh, and uh, so I don't know whether that's going to go anywhere or not, but it is something suggested by the Saudis, and it could actually resolve the major differences. So we'll keep, uh, keep in charge, uh, keep paying attention to that. Um, here is an interesting story. The ex-head of Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera, which is one of the top Arab news sites in the world, uh, the ex-head of it tweeted that the same killer was behind the death of Jesus and the death of uh, Palestinian children. Of course, most of the Palestinian children who were killed in that recent weekend of fighting in Gaza was actually from their own rockets, Gaza's rockets falling on their own uh, civilians. Uh, Israel may have killed some children, but more, more Palestinian terrorists were killed by the rockets fired from Gaza than by Israel, which is rather interesting. That's a different headline, but this picture is, is rather uh, serious in showing, uh, it says, after 2,000 years, and it's the same killer. 
And of course, this is the blood libel saying that the Jews killed Jesus. And it wasn't all the Jews killing Jesus. Number one, the Romans actually executed him. Number two, it was the religious Pharisees who condemned him to death. And all of the early believers were actually Jews. So it's, it's a real lie and a twisting of history to say that the Jews are the ones that killed Jesus. It was Even in the book of Acts, it says that Jews and Gentiles are responsible for his death. So, um, but anyway, that's been brought up again. And of course, a picture is of Mary holding Jesus and a Palestinian woman holding a baby. Uh, so that's just part of the propaganda. Here's some good news from Germany. The German chancellor rejects describing the Israeli-Palestinian relations as apartheid. That's one of the things that the left has been pushing for several years, especially on college campuses in the U.S. and uh, calling Israel apartheid, which th that definition does not apply at all because of the multicultural society in Israel. One and a half million out of nine million uh, Israeli citizens are actually Arabs and mostly Muslims. So it's just not apartheid at all. Anyway, uh, that was a good news report. The German chancellor, while he was meeting with the boss, uh, refused to use the word apartheid and said it doesn't apply. Meanwhile, at the same time when they were together in Berlin, Abbas says Israel committed holocausts against the Palestinians. And, uh, and the German chancellor just grimaced but didn't say anything. Later, he condemned those remarks. But uh, Abbas, uh, of course, he still denies the Holocaust. This was, by the way, he was in Munich at the 50th anniversary of the Munich massacre when the Israeli Olympic athletes were uh, murdered on Black September group. And, uh, and Abbas didn't apologize for that, those murders. And he actually accused Israel of having several, committed several Holocausts against the Palestinians. That doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. It's just wicked lying and twisting of the truth. Uh, here's an interesting story. Uh, Kim Jong-un's sister, first of all, she spoke for the first time to the North Korean Congress, and uh, she choked up while she was describing her brother's illness. He had COVID, and, uh, and she actually choked up, which suggests it might be more serious than they've admitted. But also, and the fact that she spoke publicly for the government was also quite profound, I think. But then she also blamed South Korea for the COVID virus and threatened to kill or take out uh, the leaders of South Korea because of the virus. So um, saber rattling still in uh, North Korea. Meanwhile, today is actually a primary day in Alaska and Wyoming, and there's some important uh, ballots on, on the ballot, names on the ballot. Uh, Liz Cheney is likely to lose by as much as 30 points and be removed from Congress. Of course, she'll fill out her term, finish her term until uh, the first, of Jan first part of January. But uh, this story uh, is about her husband who works for a law firm who's actually defending Hunter Biden. So a real conflict of interest there. Plus, this law firm has actual uh, investments in China, two major corporations owned by the Chinese Communist Party, and they're making millions and millions of dollars uh, from those Chinese companies, which also benefits uh, Liz Cheney and her husband. So you, you can only describe the swamp in, in Washington, D.C. as incestuous, the inner connections of everybody all, and usually connected somehow to China or some kind of uh, illegal deal. So uh, I, I think it's a, a good thing uh, if Liz Cheney loses in the election in Wyoming tonight. Uh, meanwhile, IRS job listings. Special agents must carry a firearm and be willing to use deadly force. You probably heard about the fact that this new uh, bill that was just passed by Congress is going to create 87,000 new IRS workers for auditors and that's actually more than they have working now. It brings a total to about 160,000. And every IRS worker has to be willing to carry a firearm and willing to use deadly force. They would, 160,000 armed IRS agents is more than the entire National Guard 
across the 50 United States. That is scary. And we need to really be aware of that and pray God's mercy and protection. And then why does the IRS need 5 million rounds of ammo? That goes along with it. They've been actually buying up ammo for several years now. And it looks like something's really uh, intentional behind all of that. Meanwhile, billionaires go treasure hunting in Greenland for rare minerals needed for electric cars. And, and they may have climate change to thank. The trouble with these minerals that are needed for electric car batteries is that it totally just devastates the environment everywhere they do it. Hundreds of thousands of acres uh, end up being destroyed just to get the, these minerals. And uh, it's part of the, the uh, contradiction and the things they don't tell you about electric cars, the cost of the batteries and the fact they don't last very long and the new one costs thousands of dollars. Well, anyway, Minneapolis Teachers Union Agreement stipulates white teachers be laid off first, regardless of seniority. So when they're cutting back because of budget issues, uh, they have to cut off white teachers first before the minorities. And then when they hire, they're able to hire, they have to give preference to minorities over whites. Uh, that used to be called discrimination, racial discrimination. Uh, but that's the way of the land for the progressives and the left. Uh, another example, North Dakota, a school board in North Dakota and Fargo uh, voted to remove the Pledge of Allegiance at their school board meetings because of two words that don't align with their diversity code. The two words, of course, are under God. They want to read, they want to not even say the allegiance because of the words under God that's in it. North Dakota, who would have thought? Amazon, uh, the company Amazon, expands pay by palm, another precursor to the mark of the beast. Shows an example of a machine where you just wave your hand over it and it reads your palm and you go on out and it charges it to your account. Um, awful lot of things pointing towards the last days. This is, I hate to even talk about this, but Boston's Children's Hospital under fire for now deleted video promoting gender affirming hysterectomies for young girls before they're mature enough to make a, any kind of wise decision. Uh, because of fads, young girls are getting hysterectomies and other uh, terrible uh, uh, surgeries um, against their bodies. Lord have mercy. Mm. The Atlantic Monthly Magazine compares Catholic rosary to an assault weapon. <laughs> They're actually saying that uh, some radical groups use the rosary or a symbol of the rosary or something and trying to link it. It's really basically the attack against Christians is what it really is. Uh, another update on Ben and Jerry's. They're uh, now accused of occupying Vermont tribal land. <laughs> Israeli students claim hypocrisy. Uh, saying that they're occupying land in Vermont that belonged to the Abernaki Native American tribe. Uh, that story is just gets weirder and weirder. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, here's uh, I consider this good news. Healthcare workers who were fired over the vaccine mandate in Illinois have now been awarded $10 million in a settlement. Uh, and uh, some of them will be getting $45,000 apiece if they were refired as a result of the vaccine mandate. I, I think that needs to continue lawsuits all over the country. You can't sue the, the Pfizer or the uh, Moderna because they had special deals with the government which said they couldn't be sued. But you can sue uh, agencies of, uh, of government and so forth. Uh, here's a cartoon, America's melting pot? No, America's boiling pot. And it mentions Hunter's laptop, January 6th trial, the Russia collusion hoax, 87,000 armed IS, IRS agents, raid on Trump, inflation, Hillary's server, BLM riots, gas prices. Well, it really is a, a boiling pot, and we need to uh, ask God for his mercy. Well, uh, I think that's enough for today. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your faithfulness. We do pray, Lord, for the peace of Jerusalem, and we thank you, Lord God, that you have still have a connection between the United States and Israel. There are still 7 million, 70 million maybe who have not bowed their knee to Baal. And we just pray, Lord God, that righteousness will 
will be rewarded and will stand in this nation. And that the enemies of, of God and in Israel, the enemies of Israel, would end up fighting one another in panic and confusion, according to the Psalm 83 prayer. Thank you, Father God. We just love you and praise your name. In the name of Yeshua ben Yehovah, your son, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.